were dressed in black and the New York Sharks in the tail taking on each other. Welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. That's Emery Hunt, the Zardo Playbook, and I'm Tyler Merkovich, and we're bringing you our 2010 ACC Conference Preview. Let's start out in the Atlantic Division where Boston College surprised some people with an eight-win season. They lost to USC in the Emerald Bowl, but Frank Skaziani enters his second year with more Answers and questions. Dave Shinsky, the sophomore quarterback, is back. Montel Harris, second team all ACC, is a great running back. Tight end Chris Pantali is a sophomore who's up and coming. Billy Flutie, wide receiver. But look out for Shaquem Phillips starting at wide receiver, the true freshman. And their offensive line is something to look forward to because left tackle Anthony Costanzo is an all ACC performer. And Thomas Claiborne, they always have a good old line. Yeah, with that offensive line, it's solid, rugged. So expect more of the same out of Montel Harris, leading rusher for that squad. Solid playmaker as well, too. Shinsky has protected football, eliminate mistakes. That's going to help that passing game blossom. And there's a question mark at wide receiver. Outside of a true freshman, there's a lot of question marks with that group. And on the defensive side of the ball, only 18 sacks last year, but they get Mark Herzlick back. Thank goodness from cancer. He is a great player, but they're bringing along a sophomore with a stupendous freshman campaign. That's Luke Quackley, 158 tackles, 13 tackles for loss. Defensive end Alex Albright will help that front seven. And in the back secondary, they have free safety Wes Davis and DeLeon Goas. Uh, keep an eye on, a, on true freshman linebacker Kevin Pierre-Lewis. He's going to be outstanding, getting him in the fold, teaming up with Herzlick and team and, uh, and squad. So you also, secondary, question mark, how can they improve? Will they be able to stop the pass this year? That's the biggest question I have for Boston College. Well, the Clemson Tigers entered Dabo Sweeney's second year. They were 9-5 last year with a Music City Bowl victory. But the big question is... Will Kyle Parker go to the Colorado Rockies to play baseball, or is it Taj Boyd's team? He's a redshirt freshman. He was very highly recruited last year. C.J. Spiller is out, but they still have Andre Ellington, the smaller back, and Harper, who are very highly touted. They're productive, too. They have a tight end, Dwayne Allen, and they got a bunch of receivers. Bryce McNeil, redshirt freshman, true freshman, Martavis Bryant, and Xavier Dye, the senior. And they have a good kicker in Richard Jackson, but it's all about the offensive line. Four returning starters, including Chris Hairston, they helped pave the way for 170 rush yards per game. Yeah, they can't afford it, afford, um, afford an injury with that offensive line because they're thin behind that starting four, starting five. So they have to make sure they stay healthy and be able to play throughout the season. Andre Ellington, a tailback, is ready to be a star, 5'10", 180, blazing speed, a lot of suddenness and quickness. So they're not going to miss C.J. Spiller as much. Because Elton is that great of a player, and Xavier Dye is a guy that's going to be outstanding. Look for him to make a big leap this year, whether who's ever back there at quarterback, because they're going to get a little bit more balance on offense. Well, on defense, they were pretty good on defense, only allowing 314 yards per game, and they held their efficiency rating, their opponent opponent's quarterbacks, to 51.2%, the lowest since 2004. And that secondary is led by strong safety, DeAndre McDaniel with eight interceptions, cornerback Marcus Gilchrist, and Rashard Hall, the non-starter who is slated to start this year at free safety, had six interceptions, but it starts up front with Daquan Bowers, he's only a sophomore, he's gonna be a serious player in the future. He's gonna be NFL guy, Jarvis Jenkins, a defensive tackle, and Brandon May, the up-and-coming linebacker. Yeah. To me, linebacker is a big question mark. That's the weakest spot of that defense, so they have a lot of questions coming in at that linebacker spot. Defensively, it's a star-studded defensive line. Keep an eye on defensive end Courtney Brown. The guy that's going to come in and play a lot, get provide that pressure off the end. And you mentioned Bowers and company. Secondary, you mentioned McDaniel, outstanding playmakers, 6'1", 210, strong safety that can really bring the lumber. Well, it's a new era in Tallahassee as Jimbo Fisher takes over for Bobby Bowden and he went out in style with a Gator Bowl victory over West Virginia last year. Fisher was there three years as the offensive coordinator. Now he has senior quarterback Christian Ponder. This is his year. No more ifs, ands, or buts for the quarterback. Jermaine Thomas and Lonnie Pryor will split time at running back. They got receivers Jamar Fortson, Burt Reed, Taiwan Easterling, but they have a great offensive line in Jacobs Award winner left guard Rodney Hudson, first team All-American, and Andrew Dacko. So all the starters return on the offensive line, and they have a pretty good place kicker in Dustin Hopkins. So a lot of weapons for Fisher to work with in his first year. Yeah, question I have though, who's going to step up and play running back, whether it be Thompson or Pryor? They need somebody to step up and take the reins of that running back spot and lead them in that category because 
I know they're tired of the running back by committee. Florida State needs a dynamite running back, so one of those guys have to step up and make plays. Best offensive line in the ACC, you mentioned, led by Hudson, outstanding playmaker, All-American. And the wide receiver core is a workmanlike group, but they're missing that wild wow factor. Think back to the Peter Wards. Think back to the uh, Kaz McCorvey's. Those guys, the wild wow factor, the Andre Coopers. Get back to that. They need that one playmaker at the wide receiver spot. And defensive coordinator Mark Stoops, formerly formerly of Arizona defensive coordinator, is going to take over from Mickey Andrews. An unlike defense last year for the Seminoles, 30 points per game they gave up, and 205 against the rush. So they were getting gashed on the run. Defensive end Marcus White will team up with sophomore, highly recruited Jacoby McDaniel at defensive tackle. Leading tackle Nigel Bradham is back, but look for the two true freshmen to get a lot of time this year, Jeff Locke and Christian Jones. And the secondary only have one returning starter, so they're going to turn it over to youth. And that's cornerback Greg Reed, who's a sophomore. And look for true freshman Lamarcus Joyner to get time at corner also. Yeah, the cornerback situation is going to be key to watch because they're going to get their hands on a lot of more, a lot more interceptions because they're going to be put in positions where they can play a little bit off coverage, a little bit zone, as well as man. So they're going to get their hands on their hands on a lot of balls. In particular, Greg Reed, look at him take up and make probably all American team this year because he's that type of playmaker. You mentioned Jeff Luck. He's a guy that's going to come and start right away, 6'1", 230, with an aggressive, mean streak. So he's going to be a dynamite playmaker for the Seminoles. Maryland coming off a disappointing year at 2-10. Ralph Friesian is maintained as head coach. He enters his 10th year, and the problem was offense, 11th in the conference and scoring at 21.3 points per game. Jamal Robinson, the quarterback, showed some flashes of brilliance last year. Running back to Ralph Scott is back after he injured his wrist after seven starts last year. Torrey Smith, that wide receiver, is a first-team all-conference performer. But Paul Penninger and the three offense starting offensive lineman returning really need to pave the way for Darrell Scott because they only averaged three yards per carry last year and 106 yards per carry per game so they really need to get that running game going. That offense, the entire offensive success hinges on the success of that offensive line. If they get that offensive line squared away, they have some talent on that team. You look at Tory, uh, Tory uh, Smith, wide receiver, and Darrell Scott, two run running back and wide receiver combination, and Jamal Robinson has to take the next step mature, eliminate mistakes, cut down on the mental errors, and that offense could be successful because there are some talent on their on their squad. So they just it just hinges on that offensive line. Well, worse than the ACC was their 31 points per game allowed on defense. A gradual rise when their yards and their pass yards per game allowed since 04. In 04, it was 172. It was 246 last year. They avoided the big play, but they were still getting picked apart. Alex Wojcik, first-team O'Connor's performer, all-time leading tackle in the ACC. This guy makes tackles. He'll team up with Adrian Moten at linebacker. And redshirt freshman Deontay Arnett at defensive tackle will help them out. One returning starter in the secondary, and that's Cameron Chisholm. So they really need to stop the bleeding through the air. Yeah, they can't allow the big play like they did last season. And Chisholm is a big part of that, so he's going to help out tremendously. Whatever they do to help him out defensively, there's going to be an added plus for the secondary. You look at the defensive line, D-tackle A.J. Francis was a freshman All-American last year. He returns. He's going to be solid up the middle. That's going to help stop the run and help get more pressure on the quarterback because it frees up a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. The linebacking court is a solid group. A lot of solid linebackers on this squad, led by Adrian Moten. He's a beast. One guy that's going to be important to Moten's success is Mr. Francis up front. He's a stud.